Welcome everybody to the next video in our series on probability and statistics. I, as always, am Dr. Lathram, and today we will continue our discussion of the gamma family of distributions with part two. So one important subfamily of our family of gamma distributions are the exponential distributions. And to see that it's a special case, um, suppose we've got a continuous random variable x, then we say it's of the exponential family if it is actually distributed as a gamma one beta distribution. So in the special case that alpha is equal to one, that is our exponential family. And you can see that that actually does give an exponential function. If we take alpha equal to one, then our PDF has the form one over beta times e to the negative x over beta. And we denote this with x tilde exp of beta. Now, the exponential distribution is important because it's most likely a model for um, the lifetimes of certain equipment, so light bulbs or anything that's going to eventually fail um, can usually be modeled with um, an exponential distribution. Now, another important property of the exponential distribution is that it has no memory. And so let's take a look and see what that actually means. So if x is distributed with an exponential distribution with parameter beta, then the probability that x is greater than t plus some delta t, given that x is already greater than t is actually equal to the probability that x is greater than delta t. So we begin by using the definition of conditional probability. That the probability that x is greater than t plus delta t given that x is greater than t is equal to the probability that x is greater than t plus delta t and that x is greater than t all of that divided by the probability that x is greater than t. Now, of course, since t and delta t are both positive, if x is greater than t plus delta t, it's clearly greater than t. And so we can drop that second condition and our probability just becomes the probability that x is greater than t plus delta t divided by the probability that x is greater than t. So now, um, using our cumulative distribution function, um, we can do a little bit of work and we'll see that the probability that x is greater than t plus delta t is given by e to the negative t plus delta t over beta. And likewise, the probability that x is greater than t is given by e to the negative t over beta. Well, if we simplify both of those, then we end up with e to the negative delta t over beta, and that is the probability um, that x is greater than delta t. Now, because the um, exponential family is a subfamily of the gamma distribution family, then we can actually infer the moment generating function um, for the exponential family from the moment generating function of the gamma family. That for the moment generating function of the gamma family we have um, given by um, one minus beta t to the negative alpha where um, alpha and beta are the parameters. But for the exponential family, we take alpha to be one and we just let beta be our arbitrary beta. And so we have the moment generating function for the exponential family is given by one over one minus beta t. And likewise, um, because the exponential family is a subfamily of the gamma family, then we can use our previous work with the gamma family to say that the mean value for um, the, an exponential family with parameter beta um, is just beta, and the variance is also given by beta squared. Now, one important connection that the exponential family has is the connection to the Poisson family. 
Um, the connection is that, recall that the Poisson distribution models the number of occurrences or the probability of the number of occurrences um, given that the occurrences are supposed to happen at a particular rate. And so how the exponential um, family fits in, the exponential family then models the time between consecutive um, occurrences of a Poisson um, distribution. And so let's see if we can see that that's going to be true. So let's begin by assuming that we've got a random variable t, and that t has an exponential um, distribution with parameter lambda. Now, we'll assume that we have one interval, so one interval or one period actually going from 0 to 1. If we wish the probability of no occurrence um, in the period, then that's actually equal to the probability that t is going to be greater than 1, so the probability that our occurrence actually happens somewhere out beyond um, where our interval or where our period ends. And so that will be lambda times the integral from 1 up to infinity of e to the negative lambda t dt. Um, just evaluating that interval, that integral, we see that that gives us negative e to the negative lambda t from 1 to infinity, which is just e to the negative lambda. Now, for the probability of n occurrences, how we will view it is on an n plus 1 dimensional space. So let's see why that's going to be true. So taking just one occurrence, we have a setting like this. So we have our period from 0 up to 1. We're assuming that we've got a t, um, t sub 1, that happens here. But then we have a second occurrence of t sub 2, where t sub 2, we want the probability that the occurrence happens outside of our period. And one assumption that we will make is that the occurrences from the exponential function are independent. So um, they're not interfering. And so what that means is that the PDF in this two-dimensional space is just a product of the PDFs for the individual events. So what we have for the PDF in this case is lambda e to the negative lambda t times t1 times lambda e to the negative lambda times t sub 2. Um, that gives us a lambda squared times e to the negative t sub 1 e to the negative t sub 2. Now, the region that we're going to be interested in in this situation um, as actually a subset of the t sub 1, t sub 2 plane um, where we're actually assuming that these t sub 1 and t sub 2 are all positive, so the upper right um, quadrant in our t sub 1, t sub 2 plane. So if we pick a value of t sub 1 in between 0 and 1, then we want our value of t sub 2 to be greater than um, 1 minus t sub 1. And so when we write this out, what we have um, for only one occurrence in the range 0 t sub 1 to 1, then the probability is going to be given by lambda squared times the integral from 0 up to 1 and from 1 minus t sub 1 to infinity. So this is our t sub 2 happening outside of the period of interest. And we've got our PDF, um, our joint PDF on the inside. Well, integrating these, we get an expression like this. And the interesting thing that happens is that in the first integral, we have e to the negative lambda t sub 1 times e to the negative lambda 1 minus t sub 1. So in simplifying that, our dependence on t sub 1 cancels out, and we're just left with an e to the minus lambda. Well, integrating that from 0 to 1 just gives us lambda e to the minus lambda. And sure enough, we are beginning to see our um, Poisson distribution starting to emerge.
Now for two occurrences, our situation is similar. We now have a three-dimensional space, t sub one, t sub two, and t sub three, and they are scattered um, as you see in this diagram. So t sub one first, then I have another time span for t sub two, and then finally the third time span for t sub three has to be beyond the, um, the period that I am interested in from zero to one. So our PDFs, um, so our random variables are independent, so our PDFs are just the product, so that we get um, a product as you see here. Um, now the region that's being characterized um, is exactly the one that's kind of shown in this diagram. We have um, lambda cubed times the integral from zero to one for t sub one, so it could be anywhere in there. T sub two has to be in the range between one minus t sub one and, um, and zero. And finally, t sub three, now t sub three has to be greater than one minus t sub one minus t sub two. So we have the range from one minus t sub one minus t sub two to infinity. So if we integrate that first one, then we get a same phenomenon that happened in the first case, where we have e to the negative lambda t sub one times e to the negative lambda t sub two, and then after the first integration, we have e to the negative lambda times the quantity one minus t sub one minus t sub two. Now what that does is to cause the other exponentials to cancel out, and leaving us with only an e to the minus lambda. So the e to the minus lambda comes outside as a constant, and so we get our lambda squared e to the minus lambda. Um, performing the integration, we see that, sure enough, we end up with a denominator of two, or two factorial in this case. So again, um, our second instance of a Poisson value for um, two occurrences. Then finally, we'll do one more, just so that you kind of begin to see the general pattern. For three occurrences, we have a diagram that looks like this. We have t sub one, t sub two, t sub three, and t sub four occurring out beyond um, our um, period of interest between zero and one. So one more time, we've got independence, so we've got a product of the marginals. Um, so and our region of interest becomes from zero to one for t sub one, from zero up to one minus t sub one for t sub two, from zero up to one minus t sub one minus t sub two for t sub three, and then finally our t sub four has to be greater than the one minus t sub one minus t sub two minus t sub three. And so same kind of thing happens. We end up with the, after the first integration, um, our variables t sub one, t sub two, t sub three all cancel out and we are left with an e to the minus lambda. Well, that comes out front and this third integral, um, I don't necessarily show the steps here, but you can work them out for yourself and convince yourself that yes, that actually does give me a three factorial or a six in the denominator. Now, kind of the general idea for the pattern, if we wish to have a probability of n occurrences, then we're working on an n plus one dimensional space. So we've got lambda to the n plus one, our integral from zero up to one, then zero up to one minus t sub one, zero up to one minus t sub one minus t sub two, and so on and so on and so on until we get our n minus first um, integral or our nth integral going from zero up to one minus t sub one minus t sub two dot 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 all the way down to minus t sub n minus one. And then finally our last integral, we need that to go um, for our last time interval to be beyond our range, um, our, our um, our period of interest between zero and one, and so um, the same thing happens as happened in the previous cases. After one integration, our dependence on the t sub i's all cancel out, and we're left with a lambda sub n e to the minus lambda. And this expression, this iterated integral, then just gives us one over n factorial. And so 
um, kind of taking this route, we have actually derived the Poisson distribution um, from consecutive occurrences um, using the um, exponential family. So that's kind of a pretty neat description of how, um, how those two families are related. Now in this case, um, you may notice that we've used a difference in parameters. So in this case, we used a parameter lambda. Um, the reason for that is that we have, um, we wanted to tie it back to the Poisson distribution and the parameter lambda was what we used at the Poisson distribution. Um, really the connection between the Poisson and the beta family are really just the reciprocal. So um, if we're exponentially distributed with a beta then um, from the gamma family then that really corresponds to um, an exponential or to a Poisson distribution with parameters 1 over beta. And so that kind of gives us the connection. So as you're reading through um, and noticing any kind of literature where you might be using both the Poisson um, and the exponentials, check and make sure what parameterization that you're using. Um, whether you're using a 1 over lambda or whether, or whether you're using a 1 over beta for your parameter or whether you're using the lambda parameter as was the case with the Poisson. So um, hopefully this has kind of given you a, a bit of an introduction to the exponential family of distributions. Um, this is part two in our series. We've got one more coming up for our gamma family in which we'll be talking about the exponential family. So hope to see you around for that. Um, and I will see you next time.